Hello, good evening, and welcome back. This is going to be about <laughs> rise and violent crime. Vincent Fuller, white supremacist car park stabbing terrorist act. Did he kill anyone? No, he stabbed someone. That's a terrorist act. White supremacist. Yep, so I, I'm guessing he must have stabbed someone who wasn't white. They were Bulgarian. Is that not white? Um, I, don't, I don't know. This, this comes back to what I was saying before, which is, when, when are you not white? So, English, clearly white, right? Um, and then France, white, sure, yeah. So further south now. So, let's go with Spain. White, yeah. So Spanish, white, Portuguese, white. The same as the, the Mexican settlers, um, hence they speak Spanish. They're white, no, they're not white. They're Hispanic, white. So Spanish people aren't white. Is that what we're saying? Italians, are they white? Not white? Mm, Greek? Greece, is that is that white? No? Bulgaria? And then into Turkey, so are they white? I'm guessing what they're saying here is that Bulgaria is not white. I'm surprised. Um, as, as I'm sure you all know, my girlfriend is Bulgarian, and she definitely is white. Then again, I'm not good with the colours, so <laughs> what do I know? But let's read on. A white supremacist who stabbed a teenager in what a judge described as a terrorist act has been jailed for more than 18 years. Good. Vincent Fuller, 50, attacked Bulgarian Dmitry Mihailov, I'm so sorry, 19 in Stanwell, Surrey, a day after a gunman attacked mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand, Brenton Towns, I believe. Um, and they go on to say that he had uh, a video excerpt of Brenton Terrence shooting. Therefore, he's clearly a supporter. Yeah. Because it, it's illegal to have any of his material in the UK now. Um, but apparently a conservative party is for free speech. <laughs> Lol, no. Fuller denied the terrorist motive, but Judge Peter Lodder QC rejected this. Uh, on the night of 16th of March, Fuller roamed the streets in a violent rage looking for a target. He initially armed himself with a Chelsea FC branded baseball bat and went on a rampage. During the spree, he tried to force his way into a house, swung the bat at cars, and was heard shouting racist abuse. You're going to die! After the bat broke in half, Fuller returned home and armed himself with a knife. He then approached Mr. Mikhailov, who was parked outside a branch of Tesco with his friend, and stabbed him through the open window. Caught that fellow twice shouted, you're going to die, and plunged a large kitchen knife towards his victim's neck. Mr. Mikhailov suffered defensive wounds to his hands, and the knife clipped his neck, the court heard. It was only by chance he was not killed, said Judge Lodder. Fellow posted on Facebook immediately before launching his attack. Oh no, almost as if the Facebook censorship isn't working either. Huh. Hmm. Several witnesses heard Fuller screaming abuse during his rampage, including one who reported him saying all Muslims should die, white supremacist rule, I'm going to murder a Muslim. Uh, <laughs> interesting, if true, and it, it's so easy to, to discount this, um, as I'm sure everybody else does as well. In a Facebook post just before the spree, Fuller praised alleged Christchurch government Britain Tower, adding, I'm English, no matter what the government say, kill all of the non-English and get them all out of our England. Right. So, Brendan Tarrant, the Australian who went to New Zealand, but this guy likes him because he's all for pro-England. Hang on. Australia was just full of Britain's criminals. That's how Australia got populated. Um, the narrative's starting to fall apart here. Judge Lodder told Fuller he was motivated by the cause of white supremacy and his personal anti-Muslim sentiments. Maybe it's just anti-Islamic. What's wrong about being against an ideology? Hmm? Well, then again, even Jacob Rees-Mogg said that we can't be against Islam, which means he's clearly a Muslim now, because you have to be. Otherwise, you're saying you don't believe in Allah, or you uh, you disagree with Islam, which means you're criticising it. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, yes, Judge Lauder said, uh, I find that it was your purpose to strike fear into the heart of people you described as non-English, in particular Muslims, he said. So, what about an English Muslim? Okay. The judge added, it is immaterial that there is no evidence that you were a member of or subscribe to any particular group or organisation. Funny that. Antifa comes to mind. In my judgment, a terrorist-related offence may be committed by a person acting alone on his own initiative and without any significant planning. Um, not about the significant planning, because the idea is it's, it's based on uh, political or ideological grounds in order to strike fear, or terror, hence the name. Um, but yeah, you can act on your own. This was a terrorist act. Pretty shit terrorist, then. In a police interview, Fuller, who has a British bulldog tattoo, that's relevant, denied being racist and said he could not remember what he had done. Um... <laughs> Interesting, if true. He tested positive for cannabis and alcohol, told a Texas he had drunk a large bottle of cider, and three cans of strong special brew lager. Right, uh, apparently it's an extreme right-wing view. Um, super 
Superintendent uh, Andy Gondal from Surrey Police said it was clear Fuller had become radicalised and developed an extreme right-wing view. They're not saying how, unless they're saying white supremacy is right-wing, so black supremacy is left-wing, Asian supremacy is what, Hispanic superiority is what, Indian superiority, what, hang on, no, this, this is falling apart because it doesn't make sense. Hmm. Identity politics, where do they belong? Where do we know all about classism, class warfare, and trying to describe people by the groups they adhere to? And the proletariat. Oh! Oh, it all makes sense now. How the fuck is this right wing? Jesus Christ. Hmm. Uh, Detective Chup Chief Superintendent Kath Barnes, head of counterterrorism at Policing Southeast, said Fuller was clearly an incredibly angry and dangerous individual who went out of his way looking for someone of non white appearance to attack. And apparently, then, Bulgaria is not, not white. Um, that's news to me. Um, there we are then. Happy to know. That is, um, very intriguing. Then again, if Bulgarians aren't white, then I'm definitely not. Cool. Gotta remember that one. Anyway, moving on. Violent retail crime leading to post-traumatic stress disorder for shop staff, report says. It's been on the increase. Shop workers are experiencing severe mental health consequences as a result of violent store crime, a study says. The report by City University of London says a rise in violent retail crime is causing long-lasting anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder among workers in the sector. More than 42,000 assaults or threats were recorded in the industry in 2018. And as I always say, if the government can't do it, then the private businesses have to. So <laughs> invest in security now. Dr. Emmeline Taylor, the report's author, says government action is urgently needed to protect staff. Yeah, or a Second Amendment. Hmm. Hmm. Seeing as, as guns are used to kill 10,000 people a year, because the other 20,000 are suicides, but also used protectively between half a million and three million, according to the FBI. Wow. Almost as if they help. When minutes are important, seconds matter most. You need some sort of immediate intervention. And hey, guns help. As, as we all know with the statistics that show that when people know that people are likely to have guns, this sort of crime decreases because, hey, they don't want to get shot. What matters is what people think, not necessarily what the facts are. And therefore, you can use that to your advantage by just publishing facts that, uh, that, <laughs> that correspond to your narrative. So you basically just show how so many people have uh, self-defense training, um, some sort of weapon, uh, licenses to use it. That sort of thing is a deterrent, and therefore people are less likely to commit these acts. Um, Dr. Emmeline Taylor, the report's author, says government action is urgently needed. But, yep, cool. No, it isn't. All too frequently, shop workers are suffering physical injuries as well as chronic and life-changing mental health consequences of violence such as long-term anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder, the report states. Yes, if... If you work in a shop, or whatever business you have, and they don't have adequate security, then you are the alarm. So uh, bear that in mind with your job at the moment, and also any um, job interviews you go to. Just say, oh yeah, what's your security like? And they might say, oh, we, we got something, it's fine, nothing happens. Like, oh, so I am your alarm. You're, you're paying me to protect your shop. Right, okay. Um, might want to be paid more then, maybe. According to the research, the four main scenarios that lead to violent interactions are encountering shoplifters, enforcing age restrictions on the sale of goods, hate crime-related incidents, I don't know what that means, and armed and unarmed robberies. So, robberies, okay. Difference between a burglary and a robbery. Burglary is when they don't confront you, and a robbery is when they do. Cool. Home office data show that assaults and threats against sector staff rose from 524 incidents per thousand premises in 2016 to 1,433 in 2017. It tripled... Any idea where this took place? Oh, you're not going to mention it. Okay, okay, okay. Earlier this year, the British Retail Consortium, BRC, said around 115 workers in the UK face threats or assaults every day. Every day. Yes, yes, we, we know this. Uh, the impact of these incidents lasts a lifetime, not just on those directly involved, but it affects their colleagues, their families, and their communities. Security is important. Uh, they were telling me they were struggling sleeping, just waiting for something else to happen, whether you're at a store, at work, or just walking down the street. One co-op worker in Manchester told the BBC an attack on his store had left a colleague beside herself. And it doesn't seem like this is racially motivated either. The report funded by the cooperative collected data from the Home Office, British Retail Consortium, Association of Convenience Stores and the Union of Shop, Distributive and Allied Workers. Author Dr Taylor, a criminologist studying the effect of store crime on workers, <laughs> it, it bad. You know it gonna be bad, it bad. So the report intends to give a better understanding of the human experience behind the rise in retail crime. Yeah. It's nice how the, the rise in retail crime, basically just crime, any sort of violent crime, just, just crime, 
Um, that's undisputed shit. Yep, yeah, there's definitely a rise in crime. Definitely a rise in violent crime. So how, does, how do people feel about that? Maybe do something about it. Uh, the strain of constant abuse and fear of physical violence is causing some shop workers to change their shift pattern, their place of work, or in the worst cases, terminate their employment entirely. And that's fair enough. If your employer can't keep you safe because the government doesn't let them, then why are you going to work there? You're not. That makes a lot of sense to me. So as always, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Always interested to hear what you guys have to say. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.